<laughs> I feel like I'm really stretching. I think that it's already live, so what you said there is definitely part of the video. That's definitely part of what's real. Hey everyone. Um, I don't like how this live thing's showing up for us, but um, <laughs> so essentially, right now. We are showing up, coming on together, wanting to just have like a processing moment to unpack what's been the experience this morning, at least, for Definitely us. this morning. We're seeing a lot of news, of protests, of, of painful experiences for many people. And it is a lot. It is a lot. Um, I'm holding so many different perspectives, I think, and the experience is going along with the perspectives. And I don't even know which, what to lead with. I think that in itself speaks to The complicated nature, the multifaceted nature of what's happening, I think there's so many levels to a single event. Like everything that we're watching is like we're seeing something, but yet there are many other things playing out beyond what we're actually seeing. And for me, what I've been experiencing just in my body is the sense of like, this is, okay, one, the world's on fire. <laughs> one, the world's on fire. And there's a whole bunch of experiences. Like I was crying earlier. We were having tender moments. And there's times of like, man, we need to be out there. We need to be fighting. And then there's like, ah, but this is all happening the way that like, this is what we've been wanting. And there's sadness and there's anger and there's uncertainty and there's so much at play. But yet still, underneath the current of the storm, there's a feeling of this is what we've been asking for, wanting, the change we've mm -hmm. been wanting. The fire has definitely been lit. And emotions are fiery as well. And in, in many ways, we've been calling for you know, parts of the system of the world to burn away and I feel something is ignited, something is beginning here. Maybe the, the sense of quiet, eerie quiet from lockdown is transitioning into something that we've been preparing for. I don't know exactly, but um, mm. I feel both this sense of like heightened expectation, like excitement, like something is here, but also like I'm aware of the pain that I feel when I see these these deaths, um, these local deaths, these these nationwide deaths. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I was crying this morning too. And and I feel that incensed experience, that anger that I'm seeing alive everywhere. I mean, it makes so much sense to me. Yeah. Anger is an appropriate response from, from feeling that pain, that, that danger, that injustice. Mm. Mm. There's something really I, empowering is not the word. Touched is not the word. I'm I'm trying to sail and find it. Maybe you can help me. But in seeing everyone come together, in seeing everyone feel unafraid to stand for what they believe in, and not with a gun, mm. but with their hearts, to stand and believe and know that that is enough. And um, 
showing their heart, showing their pain. And yes. one particular image that just set me in to free flow tears was this picture. I'm going to post it today of this black woman. She looked like an Amazon queen. Um, and she was mm. kneeling in front of, of the front line of officers ready to, they were, they had their arm, their, their, um, their beating sticks, um, <laughs> raised. That's um, a cruel thing, but it's a, it's an appropriate name. I think beating sticks. Beating sticks. But yet she was there kneeling with her heart open, sharing like, not not in defiance, not in a space of like, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to get you. get you. It was like, see my pain, see my heart and see the strength in me honoring my pain, my heart as worthy. Yeah, that was definitely a powerful photo. Just one woman on her knee, one knee looking up at the line of officers in riot gear. She was like in a tank top. Yeah, that was powerful. And the power of taking a knee is, I mean, like, that's a repeating image now, I, I notice. Um, from a, a year or so ago, starting at the uh, NFL football games, but its its power is resonating again. Mm -hmm. <sighs> to me, it really speaks to like, this is the change, like it's here. Mm -hmm. What I question now is like, if this is the change, if this is a catalyst for burning the old and, and building the new, like how, how can we contribute? Like, I think that's been one of the big questions. Like how can we be productive contributors to the emergence of, of the new in a way that feels like resonant with our truth, like a way that feels right for us? there's a million ways to do it and a lot of them feel like wrong <laughs> like either unproductive or <coughs> or just destructive just purely destructive without being constructive at all so I think we're both searching for that what to do well I think doing this is a step like us just kind of showing up and and sharing our process and speaking out because mm -hmm. we have so many conversations in our home but what is that like it's it's great for us you know we grow from it we see from mm -hmm. it yeah but what is how can we contribute what we see and what we experience to the world too? How can we join the conversation? How can we join this evolutionary step that the collective we are all making, we're all on it right now and we all have different roles to play. So how can we play our role? And I think that's a question that we can all ask ourselves is like, what role am I here to play in this grand scheme I uh, drama is a word that's been coming up in some of the books I've been mm. reading is that like it all is a drama but not in the way that we've learned like drama queen or anything but like it is this is on the stage like we are on the stage right now a story is playing out and we all have a role to play and it might not look like all of us doing the same thing you know it's easy to say this action is wrong and this action is wrong but it's we don't understand the action and the role that it plays the way that the person who's meant to play it does mm -hmm. valid yes so i think i think it's a matter of 
everyone finding their voice, like their truth and speaking their voice, like that is probably the most powerful thing. Like, the more people that are silent, the less truth there is emerging in the world between us all. And the, the more that we each as individuals can find our voice, find our truth and speak it, the more empowered experience, more empowered energy there is in the world. Yes. Yes. A couple of things are coming up today. We were watching a video. What was the word? The mind. Um, adopted mind? No. What was it? Oh. <laughs> the uh, acquired mind. Acquired mind. The mind that we acquire from birth onwards, the conditions and the things we learn. Instead of it? the original mind, which is our, which is our mind, our voice, our message, our soul, like all of these things, like I think it ties into what you said of like getting to know our truth, our message, our purpose, instead mm -hmm. of the one that we acquired. What like? The one that's actually here and, and 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 thus it's the role we are meant to play yeah as this story unfolds yeah so many roles possible and this came up last night too in the circle where it's a question of my truth is i'm speaking as if i'm a member now the circle but my truth is I feel such a pain a tender tender pain and it feels soft and how do I share that without it being drowned out by the loudness of some of the other voices like if my voice is soft and and tender and painful is it valuable and how do I, how do I share it? If anyone's here tuning in with us, I wish we could see. I know it says some people are here, but what do you guys feel about that? How do you share a tender voice in the midst of a, a, a loud crowd? How does that? How is that heard? Ooh, mm -hmm. you hear it. Mm -hmm. And the person beside you hears it. And that person hears it. And they feel their tenderness perhaps too. And I feel like it ripples. And I think that's why we're at that point when yeah. that woman is at the front line, kneeling in front of the riot, the, the riot control. Silent. Silent, because she is the embodiment of what Michael just said. She's kneeling there silent, but yeah. it speaks volumes because why? Because our collective is at that point now where that one small tender voice is now many. And now that voice is now reaching at the edges, you know, of change. All of us now ready and primed to reveal our tender voice. I think that would be very powerful, like, one drop becomes a ripple. Some ripples become waves. I think that as more and more people are awakened to their ability to share their quiet, tender voice, whether through embodiment, or writing, I mean, whatever medium it is that they share it, that adds to the power, I mean, the power always is there. It adds to like the momentum of, of the impact of tender voices and they build and build. And I think it's, it's the truth that I feel in pain because of this, that speaks to other people's heart, right? invokes compassion more than 
you are wrong. I hate you. Nobody wants to open their heart to that. It's very difficult to open your heart to that <laughs> and hear what's actually underneath it. It's a feminine truth. It is. That's what he's speaking about. And that feminine truth is the truth of your heart, the truth within. We all have feminine truth. But it hasn't been nurtured or welcomed in our societies. It's been like, you know, don't be vulnerable, don't be expressive, don't have emotions, don't let anyone see those because then you're weak. Mm -hmm. But then now we're starting to see the power of feminine truth and how feminine truth transforms. Feminine truth awakens. Mm -hmm. Feminine truth unites. It slices at first. It can, you know, but then... At the end of the storm, we see that we are together. Mm. We see that we are, we aren't separate, separate. We see that the truth brings unity. Mm. I can't yeah. feel my feet. <laughs> <laughs> we can see them. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Power isn't always in the attack. Right? That is like the very polarized masculine power we've been taught to see and has been regurgitated and enforced through into our minds and all of the media programming we see, all the TV shows and movies, it's attack. It's it's a forceful forceful power that that's what we're taught to admire and, and respect and and cherish strive for and strive for but it's not it's not the only power and it's i don't think it's even the most powerful power it's 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 a force but it's not it's not what true power looks like it doesn't have to look like Attacking, fighting, killing, beating, winning. And that's what I think our collective is evolving to, to know and to reclaim now. Hmm. Yeah. How can we incorporate more people together? How can we show ourselves and and inspire compassion and togetherness that that is really a real power like the power to convert to assimilate and and take people in and have them join you isn't that more powerful than erasing them like destroying them out of your way because in, in the first when you have them join you then you multiply in 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 power but you destroy them if you're still just one mm. and how much of destroying have we done mm -hmm. how we destroy much parts of ourselves even as our history humanity mm -hmm. how much destroying have we done how like many that? cultures have been destroyed how many cultures have been destroyed mm -hmm. how many like yeah, cultures, <laughs> cultures, places, like people, really. people, souls. But we're realizing, I believe, that this isn't the way, or this isn't what we're wanting anymore. This is what we did in the past, but we want to emerge in a new future. So we need a new way to get there. Well, <laughs> this has definitely transformed. Um, as you say, to get there, that uh, I'm just I'm always going to bring it back to that point that we're saying is like it's here now. That's what's happening mm. now. That's what. Mm. That's what the change is now. That's what this like the fire is forging now. That's what 
the silence has connected us to now, the silence of, of quarantine and, and distancing and all of that has brought us inwards to reconnect. And then now it's like we're stepping out mm -hmm. with that connection now, empowered by that connection to truth. Mm. We spent time going into the temple to find the the truth in the, on the altar. And now that we're stepping out, can we bring the truth out with us and, and take not just our, take our like reverence out of just being within the temple and take it into our life, into the whole world outside. Mm. We take the power of the practices, the internal practices in the temple and translate those to be powerful outside as well. Mm -hmm. And this is our attempt in doing that by showing up here now. You know, we had no idea what we'd talk about, what to say, how to say, how can you even speak to something like this? You know, I know in my in my experience, I've always been afraid to speak about what I feel or what I think or because I'd always think, who am I to say something is, is something? Who am I to have a perspective on this? You know, who am I going to offend mm -hmm. by saying something? And I, I would always just be quiet in that fear. And, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to be bold. Now I'm trying to speak. I'm trying to share, even though I'm afraid that, like, I'll see a comment of someone, you know, disagreeing and wanting to fight about it. But now I feel like, first... It's been wonderful having the support of my partner here, us doing it together. So I'm constantly reminded of like, mm. you know, there's love here and, and what I'm speaking from is love. You know, even I know that in myself, but I look out and I have this reflection to remind me if I forget. Um, but then as I'm here sharing it with you guys, I, I feel like this is part of the change is like no longer being afraid of speaking and it not being accepted or being different or having a perspective that might not be the commonly accepted one of being that mm -hmm. one you know who's okay with being the first to bring a new idea to light and not fear for their lives you know not fear being ostracized or shunned, but knowing that, you know, you always will have a home, like you'll always be welcomed in the home of your heart. And that those silent whispers, the silent voices will start to ripple. And slowly it becomes, you know, a community of others who believe the same, like you'll, you'll find each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> that was good for me to hear too. I know that um, I think there's always been this little fear down hiding in a corner telling me not to speak on you know matters that I who am I to even know anything about like like race like, like sit down white boy you don't know nothing like fear of being actually told that from someone else so i'm telling myself that when really i just want to share like my care and i want to share my voice how can i use my position whatever it is, earned or not earned, to contribute to all of everyone's ascension into justice, into equality, into power.
Yeah, it's been a real pain point that that has held me back from saying things in many contexts. So I guess this is me being bold, <laughs> my version of it right now. Yeah. We all have our own version of boldness that we're being called to step into right now. And they all look different. But can we allow them to be hurt, allow ourselves to be hurt. Mm. Believe that you are loved and you are. I want to keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. That's too. I also have this like desire to hear from anyone who watches this at any point. I see a couple people, Abby, Eva. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you being called to be bold now? What's your version? What's your role to be played in this, in this story as it plays out for us all? In my heart bursting. All right, everyone, I'm feeling like really sweaty, <laughs> but in the best, like I feel like purification sweatiness. <laughs> that means me too. <laughs> uh, it's been nice to sit here. I feel like we're in the living room together, whoever's tuning in. Like I feel like we're honestly in a circle together, just like sharing energetically. Like I mm -hmm. can just feel, I can just feel you. And um, yeah, my commitment is to, is to do more of this, to speak more. Yeah. Yeah, I'll join you in that. Uh, I want to find a way to invite other people to be in here with us. Yes. I would love that too. How do we do that? I have an idea. What is it? We can stream a live Zoom and put the link, the join link in the comment. Ooh, would you guys join in if we did that? If we had like a, a Zoom call and like had it going live on Facebook and if you wanted to join in, you could join in to speak with anyone. Or called? just share your video with us. Yeah. Or even just hearing my how you receive it, your, your mm-hmmms or uh-uhs, <laughs> even that. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Let us know. Maybe we'll do that the next time. Okay, my heart's exploding now. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we send you all with so much love. May you continue to connect to your role that you are called to play in this beautiful awakening. Mm. Mm. Follow your heart, follow your truth. <laughs>